Hi, this is Donamis33. My brothers and sisters, we are still on the watch for the rapture. It didn't happen on May 27, Memorial Day. So we just continue to watch. I am now looking at the Essene calendar, uh, which uh, places Pentecost on June the 2nd. This is the uh, 15th day of the third month. Uh, we understand that um, Isaac was born on this day. Uh, Enoch also ascended into heaven on this day, on the 15th day of the uh, third month. So, my brothers and sisters, I don't believe we have uh, months or weeks. I believe we are just we just have days. So, let's just continue to watch uh, for the next few days. Also, um, other things are happening around the world. We have the we have uh, Norway. I think Norway, is Spain. And a third country, uh, Ireland, they're going to recognize the Palestinian state today. So that's another thing that is, again, it is another thing that can trigger the rapture. And also, remember, sister, we have, uh, this is from uh, Watchwoman 65, she uh, reported that uh, a second, even a third uh, radar system of the Russians has been taken out. So I'll, I'll put this in the link. So again, some people keep asking, well, what what would that do? Um, well, if uh, a nation is taking out the weather systems, whereby the uh, Russian won't be able to see incoming, the fact is that it's happening, and they know who who's causing it. They are going to they are more and more being pushed to attack. It's as if they are, it's like NATO is is literally wanting uh, Russia to launch so that they can go to war with Russia. So this is something that uh, NATO is actually instigating through Ukraine. So brothers and sisters, and also we have the what's going on with uh, Hamas and Israel. Um, as you can see, the everything is escalating. The way I see things play out, it, it, it seems to be clear now what's going to happen. N uh, nuclear missiles are launched just before they hit, the rapture takes place. Now, the rapture will be uh, preceded by earthquakes. It will be preceded by tsunamis. All this is going to happen at the same time. So what will happen, uh, nukes will be launched. The rapture takes place in the midst of earthquakes, in the midst of tsunamis. Um, and then the, what will happen after that is going to have the UFOs will manifest. We will have the... Um, Falling angels here on the earth after that. This is going to happen very quickly, very, very quickly, my brother and sister. It's not going to be drawn out. It's not going to be an hour. It's going to be minutes. So we only have a few, we only have a few more days to go. I don't see us being here till until the fall. So this is just a, a, a video to encourage my brothers. Uh, also, I want to point out something here. Let me see. Now, um, Someone left this comment on my on my last video that uh, people should be be beware that I'm a work based salvationist. Work based salvationist. Uh, they don't seem to understand that faith without works is dead. Now, and I use this this text from Romans. This text from Romans that uh, they read it. You have to be very careful, my brothers and sisters, how you read Paul's letters. Many are using Paul's letters to live a life of lawlessness. It's the reason why uh, so many people think that they can divorce their spouses and remarry and then continue in that. If, if you divorce your spouse and you, you marry somebody else, that's adultery. It's not just adultery one-off. It's a continuous adultery. And you can't just say, sorry, Lord, and then continue to live in adultery. You have to end the adulterous relationship, remain unmarried, or reconcile with your covenant spouse. A lot of people think that they can quote uh, 1 Corinthians 51 to 4, all their sins are forgiven, past, present, and future, and then continue on to practice adultery. And they will claim, this guy actually believes that... Um, as long as they put faith in the substitutory uh, sinless life of Christ. In other words, they remain in adultery, and as long as they put faith in the sinless life of Christ, all is good. If this is your reasoning, expect to be left behind. 
my brothers and sisters. So this is what uh, was my reply to this uh, person's comment. This is why I, I replied to him. I quoted I quoted the text here, and this is what I this is what I wrote. This is what I wrote. You're quoting a text you don't understand. The rituals of the law is what Paul was referring to in the text you quoted. Believing in the Lord Jesus Christ ended the need for us to perform the rituals of the law. So this is what this actually means when he says, for Christ is the end of the law. Is that is referring to the rituals of the law. In other words, when Christ came, he ended the need to do sacrifices. When he, when, so when he came, we have faith. We put our faith in Jesus Christ. And what does he give us? It gives us eternal life. And this is what I wrote here. Um, let me just read it again. Believing in the Lord Jesus Christ ended the need for us to perform the rituals of the law. The rituals of the law include animal sacrifices, circumcision, keeping the commandment to not commit adultery is not in the rituals of the law. This is why Paul said, Oh, no one anything except to love another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandment, you shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You see, these are the commandments. These have not been done away with. We must do these. Why we must we do them? Is the evidence that we have eternal life. Eternal life must manifest through the practice of righteousness. And this is the righteousness of God that we practice. And this is what I wrote here. When we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, we receive the gift of eternal life. Eternal life is the love of God that enables us to practice the righteousness of God. All those who submit to the practice of God's righteousness do not divorce their spouses to remarry. To do this is adultery. The married covenant is for life. And every true believer has the power to keep the married covenant for life. All of us men in the Christian world have been given a direct command from the Lord Jesus Christ to not divorce our wives. This is First Corinthians 7. This is a direct command. This is not opinion. This is not my opinion. To the married, I give this charge. Not I, but the Lord. I'm going to jump here. The husband should not divorce his wife if you divorce your wife and your wife goes on to marry somebody else that is treachery as a man you're responsible for that that brings up that brings its own judgment my brothers and sisters so people must be careful because many people are going to be left behind because they are practicing the continuous adultery hmm? so my brothers and sisters this is what i what I wrote here. I don't want anyone to be left behind because many people are going to be left behind. Many of what I've posted on my on my channel, hmm, many of it is for tribulation saints because I know that people are not going to repent. They're going to insist that uh, all their sins, past, present, and future, are washed away, and why they continue to live in rebellion against the commandments. A lot of people don't believe that they need to live holy. They don't believe that they need to live a righteous life. And so they continue to quote Paul's letters, which have been actually uh, falsely interpreted. Because people don't want to, people want to continue to live in sin. People want to continue to live an, an unrighteous life. And they think just because they're pastors, just because they have YouTube channels, that all is good. Don't be deceived, my brothers and sisters. Many people are going to be left behind because they refuse to repent of adultery. To divorce your spouse, to marry somebody else is continuous adultery. Yes, you're saved. But just because we're saved doesn't mean that the Lord doesn't chastise us when we live in sin. My brothers and sisters, don't be deceived by, by these false teachings. On YouTube, we have to live a righteous life. We have to, this is how we have to live. Okay. We have to bring forth righteousness. 
Yes, you're saved. Mm? This man, you're secure in him. But what we're talking about here is going into rapture. Mm? You can be saved and still be left behind if you're living in rebellion. Mm? The Lord is not coming back for people who are living in rebellion. He's not coming back for people who are not striving to practice righteousness. Mm? People think that striving is, is you're trying to work out your, you're trying to work your salvation yourself. No, you're simply living out the life you already have. So don't be deceived, my brothers and sisters. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God. That's First Peter 10, 11. We read it again. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God. When we say practice righteousness, we're simply saying keep the marriage covenant. Mm? Be a wife. That's what it means to practice righteousness. Be a husband. That was, that's what it means to practice righteousness. Be a loving brother. That's what it means to practice righteousness. Be of service to other people. That's what it means to practice righteousness. Mm? Let this man grow. Live this man. Because this man, God wants to, when he comes, he wants to unite this man to this man here. He wants to unite this man, the outward man, to this man. So, brothers and sisters, let's remain in faith. I hope we have just a few more days to go. If not, we'll continue to watch. My brothers and sisters, speak to you soon. Bye for now.